Hello and welcome to Roots and Shoots. In our session uh, today, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 4 and we're going to start reading from verse 31. So please uh, turn to it in your Bible and follow through as I read the passage. Then Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath he taught the people. They were amazed at his teaching because his word had authority. In the synagogue there was a man possessed by a demon, an impure spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Go away! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What words are these? With authority and power he gives orders to impure spirits and they come out. And the news about him spread throughout the surrounding area. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait, wait on them. At sunset the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of illness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God! But he rebuked them, and would not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Messiah. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, after Luke's introductions where he, he talks to us about uh, Jesus and his background and his qualifications for ministry, now we come on to the point where we, we see him uh, start to do miracles and signs and works of power. We ask you to help us to focus on the right things as we look at what was going on here. That, Lord, you would help us to focus our thoughts on your word uh, and not to be distracted by uh, the things that we want, like the people in Capernaum were. Lord, we ask you to open our hearts and our minds as we look at this passage together. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you've been following the, the earlier studies, uh, we've had uh, the temptation of Jesus at the start of this chapter. And then we had the time when he went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And he spoke in the synagogue. And he offended the Nazarenes because he was there to tell them that he was the Messiah and he did so powerfully. But they wanted him to do the things that they'd heard he was doing in other towns and cities. And when he said no, they were offended. So now in this passage, we have Jesus going down to Capernaum. And when they say going down, it absolutely was. Uh, Nazareth was about 1,200 feet above sea level. Capernaum was about 686 feet below sea level. So he dropped nearly 1,900 feet. Um, I didn't think to try and convert that into metres uh, for those of you who are uh, uh, a lot younger than me. But um, that's going to be about 650 metres, I guess. Um, in height difference between the two. So when he walked down to Capernaum, he definitely did. Now I'd like us to pause on the passage 
as we usually do. And what that means is that you'll get ready to press the pause button. I'll give you some questions which will come up on screen in a moment. And I'll ask you to look at the passage to find the answers uh, to these questions. And then when you're ready, hit play and we'll share some thoughts together. So here we go. Our first question. Authority is a word that comes up quite a bit in this passage, either the word itself or Jesus demonstrating his authority. And there are three specific areas where Jesus demonstrated his authority in this passage. What are they? Secondly, what was the result of the things Jesus did in Capernaum? And thirdly, what are the things Jesus must do? in this passage. Take a look and when you're ready hit the play button again uh, and we can uh, share some thoughts together. So see you in a moment. So welcome back. Jesus definitely demonstrated his authority here. One of the things I did when I first started to look at this passage I'd printed it out onto an A4 sheet and I started to underline where the word authority was used in one colour and then where other demonstrations of that authority uh, could be seen in another colour. And there were three main areas and that's what I asked you to look for. In verse 32 we see the first one very clearly it says they were amazed at his teaching because his words had authority. When Jesus spoke, well, his teaching was very clear. He would say to them, you've heard it was said, but I say to you. And then he would go on to say what he wanted them to know. The historians tell us that in those days, the teachers that these people were used to listening to, well, the, the quote that I've got here, it says they were in bondage to quotation marks. They taught by quoting other people. They found it very difficult to come up with original ideas. Um, and they learned by learning what other people were teaching them. And then they would quote them. And if you had any issue, if you wanted to ask any questions, they would have to go back to the people that they were quoting or to their writings to understand. But Jesus was an I say to you. And how did that come about? Well, he studied God's word. He prayed about it. He lived it out. He could teach them how God's word needed to be applied to their lives. And he could teach them what the prophets were talking about because he had studied and understood and the Holy Spirit had helped him. So his teaching was with authority. I hold my hands up. You know I'm great for quoting other people, but I hope I'm not a slave uh, to quotation marks and can give you uh, thoughts, not just other people's ideas, but but to, to uh, really myself uh, listen to what God is saying and, and pass that on to you. By all means, give me some feedback on the closing screen uh, is my email address. And I'd love to hear from you if you've got any uh, any thoughts on that. The second area where Jesus had authority was the area of demons. In verse 36, all the people were amazed and said to each other, what words these are? Notice it's still his words. With authority and power, he gives orders to impure spirits and they come out. Now, demonology, uh, the idea of demons in the spiritual realm is something that that grips some Christians and they 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 uh, they really try and major on this. Uh, I've known people who believe that illness is the result of demons and, and depression. They will try and cast out the demons. We need to understand the period that we're talking about here. We learned in one of our earlier studies that 
uh, Satan was in control of the world and he offered Jesus the power uh, without the cross. Uh, but Jesus was there to defeat Satan. And not only did he defeat him in uh, temptation, but just Jesus' very presence walking on the earth made the demons expose themselves and, and shout and, and say, we know who you are, why have you come? They were tormented by the very presence of Jesus. One of the commentators has pointed out that um, there is more about the spiritual realm, more about demons and angels in the New Testament than there is even about sin or love. The spiritual world is real. We're in a spiritual battle. But uh, Jesus was there in person. And so the demons were more active and more seen because Jesus uh, was walking the earth. And so I'm just going to try and restart my camera uh, if I can. And let's go back again. And there we are. Sorry about that. Um, uh, Jesus was, was active and so the demons were afraid and they wondered why he was there. But Jesus had authority over the demons and his authority uh, shut them up and cast them out from where they were doing harm or holding people in bondage. Remember what Jesus preached from Isaiah. He sent me to, to declare freedom to the prisoners and to the oppressed. And the third area where uh, uh, Jesus demonstrated his authority is the area of sickness, where Jesus was able to heal. Uh, and to start with, we see Jesus going to the home of, of Simon, that's Simon Peter. And uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law was sick with a high fever. She was very sick. But Jesus rebuked the fever and the fever left her. Now, I'm not suggesting that we try and do the same when people are ill and rebuke the illness. But by all means, we pray for them. Uh, but note here, this is Simon Peter's mother-in-law. That tells us a simple fact. That Simon Peter was married. And uh, if you think of how the Roman Catholic Church reveres Peter as the first pope and then uh, all the successive popes, uh, the Roman Catholic Church requires them to be celibate, not married. But the first pope was married. Uh, that's a thought worth thinking about. So then our second question, what was the result of the things Jesus did? Well, what we see in verse 40 is that when when these things happen, the teaching, the casting out of demons, the healings, they bring people to him. Notice in verse 40 that it was at sunset because what Jesus had been doing was in the synagogue on the Sabbath. But at the end of the Sabbath, then the people brought pe other people to him seeking healing, seeking deliverance, seeking to hear his teaching. If you look at verse 42, we go from sunset to daybreak. Jesus was kept busy by the demands of the people all night. And we go on in verse 42. It says the, the people were looking for him and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. That's a natural human reaction. Here was the answer to all their needs. Capernaum was going to be a place where there was no sickness, where there was no demon possession, as long as they could keep Jesus there to deal with it. They wanted more of him. But that leads us on to our next question. What are the things Jesus must do? Well, we notice already in verse 42, after he'd been up all night ministering to the needs of these people, he departs to a solitary place. Jesus must spend time 
alone with his father. And Jesus wants to go to a place of quietness. One thing that's worth noting here is that demons are noisy. When Jesus encounters them, they shout out and they say, we know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus tells them to shut up. Why? I don't believe Jesus needs their testimony. Uh, he doesn't need the demons telling who he is. The second thing is, Jesus doesn't want them to then mix their lies with the truth. Because they can't be trusted to speak the truth, even though saying we know who you are, the son of God, is the truth. Probably the next thing they were going to say would be lies to try and get people to believe them. And the third reason is Jesus doesn't want us to listen to them and to hear what they have to say. When they spoke, they were not speaking with faith, hope or love. And the scripture tells us that the demons know uh, that they tremble. They are not uh, creatures or uh, 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 spirits of faith. They don't have hope and they certainly don't love. Jesus needed to spend time alone with his father, away from the noise, away from the distractions. And so do we. And uh, I hope by now, if you're following this, uh, you'll have heard me talk plenty of times about quiet time. Time when we take ourselves away and spend time alone with God. Uh, some uh, people who are married will do that together, but I urge you to do it on your own as well so that you have a firm faith uh, and that that comes from the time you spend alone with God. And then the other thing that Jesus must do is what he says in verse 43, where he says, I must preach in other towns as well. I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. See how Luke's focus is on the teaching of Jesus about what he had come to, uh, to teach and to say and to reveal to people from God's word. It's easy for us to, to latch on to the the, the miracles and the wonders and to think, oh, wouldn't that be great if we could have these? But they were simply ways that God attested to who Jesus was. <coughs> Excuse me. In fact, the New Testament doesn't have a word for miracle. Although we use the word miracle in a lot of our Bible translations, and certainly it's, a, it's almost an everyday word. Uh, certainly in the church, about the idea of miracles. No, the New Testament uses three different words, and each of them can be translated miracle. Uh, one is signs, one is uh, wonders, and one is power, or works of power. We think of them as miracles because to us a miracle is when God uh, does something that's against the order of nature. Does something unexpected. But the root behind them is the idea of signs. Signs point the way. Signs uh, will tell you, you know, signs range from a name badge that tells who you are to uh, a signpost on the street that points and tells you where to go. And sometimes those signs will say, oh, uh, Little Shelford is a mile that way. Or there are some wonderful signs where when you drive up to, towards Peterborough and get on the A1, it just says the north. And um, because that uh, you could be going anywhere in the north, but that's the way to get there. Signs, miracles are attesting to who Jesus is, that God has sent him, that he is the Messiah. They're not things that we can expect today. Uh, I'm not saying that God doesn't heal people. He certainly does. But uh, in this case, these miracles were there to attest 
to the power of Jesus. And then we see uh, signs again and wonders during the time of the apostles where they are given to people who are revealing God's truth to attest to who they are. Uh, and we can't claim that uh, same authority ourselves. So uh, here's Jesus in Capernaum. Uh, he works these great uh, miracles. They want to keep him. But no, Jesus says, I've got to go and teach. Everybody has got to hear my message. The message is the most important aspect until we come to the cross where Jesus brings redemption and forgiveness of sins. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that here in this passage that we've studied, we clearly see the authority of Jesus that you gave him. And he had authority over uh, demons. He had authority over sickness. He had authority in so many ways. But it was the preaching of his word that brought that authority and that was the reason for his being here. Lord, as we continue through this gospel, we pray that you would help our minds to focus on the teachings of Jesus and to understand the things that Jesus wants us to know so that we can grow in our faith and be more like him. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining in this study. Uh, I've actually recorded this study um, earlier than normal, but we'll schedule it to uh, drop uh, in just over a week's time because I'm about to go on holiday. All being well, by the time I get back, I'll be ready to record the next study so that there won't be any interruption in the, uh, the regularity of these sessions. Um, so I'll look forward to seeing you next time when I'll, I hope, uh, be well refreshed after my holiday. And uh, I hope that you uh, have a good time between this session and the next one. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Have a good week.